1975, when George Hallis presented George Connor for induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Coach Hallis said, George Connor was one of the last of football's Ironmen, the 60-minute players who went all the way on offense and defense. Five times he was chosen All-NFL, and three of those times he had the very rare distinction of being picked on both offense and defense, tackle on offense plus linebacker on defense two seasons and defensive tackle one season. It would be difficult for me to go on record as saying where he excelled. I would rather have had three like him, but I feel fortunate to have one Connor for eight seasons. He is Chicago born and bred, but he had a lot of growing to do from a tiny acorn to a mighty oak. He was a premature birth and he only weighed three pounds. As a freshman at De La Salle High School in Chicago, he weighed 135 and stood five feet, four inches. But three years later, he was 6'2", 215. His collegiate days were divided. First at Holy Cross during World War II when he was an All-American in 1943 as a freshman and then Notre Dame where he was twice All-American. After George Connor had retired as a Bears player, he was a Bears assistant coach. Then he was a Bears broadcaster. He was a longtime advocate and supporter of Maryville Academy. Here to accept for uh, the late George Connor is his son, George Connor Jr. Well, in case you're wondering, where did my growth spurt come from? It didn't come because I have the true Connor body. I look more like my father's family than he ever did. Um, earlier today, I uh, had the pleasure to, uh, in the VIP uh, reception, to meet a number of the inductees. And, and by the way, uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, but in particular, I was talking to uh, Chris Ledyard um, about the great work that's uh, going on at the uh, Franciscan University. And I was enjoying the conversation all the way to the point that Chris announced, and I don't know how we got on the subject of hockey, but that he was an Anaheim Duck fan. You know, Chris, you're doing great, great work there, but you lost me. Go Blackhawks. <laughs> on behalf of my mother, uh, Sue Connor, and my brother, uh, Al Connor, um, I would like to thank uh, Pat McCaskey, uh, Angela and uh, Matt Tomlinson, and the other members of the Sports Faith International team uh, for inducting my father, uh, George Moose Connor, uh, into their Hall of Fame. Uh, my father has the distinction of being a member of both the college and the Pro Football Hall of Fames. But I know if he were here today, he would recognize the un uniqueness of this Hall of Fame the emphasis on religious faith along with athletic excellence. My father was raised Catholic. He had a strong faith in God and he was, that influenced him both on and off the field. And for those reasons, he would be deeply honored to be accepted into this Hall of Fame. If my father were here today, he'd be happy to see Virginia McCaskey. Um, her husband, Ed McCaskey, was a great friend and of course, uh, her father, George Hallis, was his head coach while he played with the Chicago Bears. Uh, my father deeply admired George Hallis. Maybe not so much when he was the owner and it was off season and there was salary negotiations, but definitely as a coach and as a person. As it was mentioned, uh, my father was uh, presented by George Hallis uh, for his induction into the Hall of Fame. Um, one thing that uh, is an interesting note is my father was the first Chicago Bear to be presented by George Hallis to the Hall of Fame. If my father were here today, thank you. If, if my father were here today, he'd also be happy to see Father John Smith. Um, he admired Father Smith's work at Maryville Academy and he helped him uh, in his fundraising um, efforts. Um, and finally, if he was here, 
um, he'd be happy to be in the same induction class as John Latner, a fellow domer from the University of Notre Dame, but he'd also be happy to be in the same induction class as Bob Cousy, a fellow crusader from the College of the Holy Cross. It's not too well known, but my dad attended both universities, the University of Notre Dame and the College of the Holy Cross. While he graduated from the University of Notre Dame and received a class ring from there, he took out the blue stone and inserted a purple stone for Holy Cross. Coincidentally, my brother Al graduated from the University or the College of Holy Cross, and I'll give you one guess where I went to school. <laughs> Faith, confidence, and courage. Like many of us, do, my father received his religious beliefs from his parents, Dr. Charles Connor and Esther Connor, who was a nurse. But my, his parents did something unique. They distilled their uni, religious beliefs into three simple words, a three simple word motto, faith, confidence, and courage. These three words were put into action in the days immediately after January 21st, 1925, the day my father was born three months premature, weighing less than three pounds. My parents were told, or his parents were told by the attending physician that their baby boy was not strong enough to live. And as the custom was in those days, um, he was to be sent home and to die um, around loved ones in the home. While my parents, or his parents, took uh, my father home, his mother did not accept the prognosis. When she had been working as a nurse, um, she had um, worked for a doctor who ran the Infant Welfare Society. My grandmother got in touch with him um, and had him come and examine my father. Uh, my grandmother had witnessed some remarkable recoveries of infants that were um, uh, suffering from malnutrition. Um, the doctor came, examined my father, um, and said there might be hope for him to survive, but that my grandmother had to um, follow a very strict regimen, and that was to keep my father in a room heated at 80 degrees and to feed him boiled cabbage juice and carrot juice every hour, on the hour, 24 hours a day, until further notice. This soon became a grueling regimen for my grandmother, as my father was so small that the feedings had to be done through an eyedropper. Um, she barely had time between feedings to have a cat nap between the hourly feedings. But after several months, the doctor came back and pronounced my father well enough to take baby food and to be treated like an infant of his age. My father had survived because his mother had the faith not to give up the confidence to find a solution, and the courage to execute the doctor's plan. It is said that actions speak louder than words. My father has had a big influence on my faith, my religious beliefs, and how I um, try to live my life according to Christian values. Growing up, my father was a man of few words, but he was a man of great actions. While my father did many big things, one of which helping launch and sustain the Maryville Academy Chuck Wagon Day, which became the primary fundraiser for John, Father John Smith while he was at Maryville. It was the small things that he did that had the most impact on me. The way he treated ordinary working people, busboys, um, doormen, waiters, waitresses, with dignity and respect, always being friendly and never mistreating them. That had an impact on me. It was interesting when our family went out for uh, dinner, um, my father always tipped the busboys. And my brother and I, after a couple times, looked at him and said, you know, we understand you usually tip the waiters and the waitresses, well, why are you tipping the busboy? And he said, they have a job to do, they, job it, they do it well, and besides, you never knew, know when they might become the maitre d' of that restaurant and you'll need to get a table there. <laughs> At my father's wake, my brother spoke to a total stranger in the reception line. And this stranger told him, quote, about 35 years ago, I was in a bar and your father bought, bought me a beer 
and, ta and then talk to me for 10 minutes. I will never forget how good he made me feel. It has been 12 years since my father passed away. While my mother, my brother, and I miss him dearly, we are grateful to the executive board and the other members of Spaith, uh, Sports Faith International that they decided to induct my father into their Hall of Fame. In preparation for the radio interview I did on my father, as well as for this speech, um, we all had a chance to talk to each other um, about my father, and it gave us a chance to retell stories, funny stories, and remember the good times. But most importantly, uh, we've had the chance to remember what a great husband, father, football player, and Christian man my father was. Thank you.